Are we in there? We in there? Alright. I apologize everybody for the delay in the video rollout. Very busy weekend. Technical difficulties. Um, had my graduation party. I just got my master's from St. John's University. I took all my last, like my last semester online from Atlanta and everything to St. John's in New York. But you know, enough about me. I'm here to bring y'all this May 30th edition of Redskins Report. And there's a lot to report. And I don't want this video to run forever and take three weeks to upload on YouTube. So I'm gonna be brief, concise, and hilarious as usual. First, Redskins president Bruce Allen has stated that the Redskins could hire one to three people to fill in as GM replacements with the responsibilities possibly being split up. And I don't particularly like this plan, this move, whatever the, whatever you want to call this. But, I mean, if we make the playoffs consistently and emphasis on consistency because I want long-term success, then I can't complain because if we just win... 12 games this year and then just win four games the next few years then that's obvious that the GM whatever GM structure they build did not work out so I, I want long-term consistency I want long-term success but if it works out then I can't complain and it may lead to a shift in paradigm of how front offices should be structured and ran in the NFL so um, I'm a little, uh, I don't like it, but I'm interested in seeing how it's going to turn out just to add some extra dynamics to the Redskins crazy offseason. Second, the lease for the Redskins stadium, FedEx Field, ends in 2027. And the Redskins are thinking about building a new stadium. But if they do not have a definitive plan for the, the next stadium, within the next two years, then this new stadium idea might fold because teams tend to have a 10-year plan when it comes to making a stadium. And if it's getting too close to the lease, then they're just going to probably renew the lease. But um, I personally prefer the stadium to stay in Maryland, but I'm biased because it was 15 minutes away from where I used to live. I literally just GPSed it real quick. It's 15 minutes from my old address. And I plan on going back there to buy some property since it's such a big part of my childhood. I lived there for my first basically, well, eight of my first 10 years. So being able to drive to any game real quick, you know, something light, that would be 3-5. So I would, I would definitely prefer the stadium to stay in Maryland. But don't just do it for me. Do it for hype little buddy right here, this little gif on the right side. <laughs> and next, third. OTAs, of course, Jordan Reed and Trent Williams, a.k.a. the 47th best player in the NFL. NFL Network just announced, you know, voted on by team players. I think they uh, have them very underrated, but it's cool. The, both of them are no-shows, but hey, I mean, they've earned it. And then plus, the less time Jordan Reed does anything football-related, anything more tasking than just eating and sleeping, is a higher chance he'll get injured. So he needs to stay at least a 10 mile radius away from any football until mini camps arrive on June 13th. But Jordan Reed is working out with one of the goats right now, Chad Johnson. You can see him doing a little funky little dance at the bottom left of the screen. And I hope he gets some of that juice. I mean, I really hope some of that rubs off on him. Jordan Reed already great. All he got to do is stay healthy. But if he can somehow get better, it's over with for everybody. And I'm gonna have to draft him on my fantasy team. That's that's super, that's super production. And Josh Doxson is a full go in OTA, which is very noteworthy. And he's been impressing. I've read. I'm assuming he's balling like how he did in his bottom right gift from college. And the Redskins are being very patient with him, and rightfully so, because we really need this first round pick from last year to actually play more than just a couple of games. He's going to improve this red zone offense and fill in for a major hole that we just got from losing Deshaun and Pierre. So take your time with Josh Doxson, but I do want to see some production. I have some expectations for him this season. Now, fourth, 
my boy Matt Jones, boy. Matt Jones is not at OTAs. And I just got a notification literally a few minutes ago that he basically just wants to be released. He's not feeling it. Earlier, I was going to talk about, I had it written in my script to talk about how Jay Gruden said he better show up to practice. You know, boss man Gruden said he better show up to minicamp. But, I mean, at this point, you can see Matt Jones don't care. So everything I was about to say is just null and void now. He already just came out and said, let me go. Let me breathe. Trade me. Do something. Oh, and never mind that score at the bottom right. That's a glitch. You know how people be trolling and changing the scores on gifts and all of that. You know, that's just, a, that's fate. That never happened week one 2016 NFL season. Now, fifth, my boy Jay Gruden has high expectations for our team, which is a dark horse in the NFC East. People really sleep. And, you know, he should have high expectations. This is going to be a high-powered offense. Nasty, angry defense. I mean, we about to get these dubs. Believe that. So, Jay Gruden, I'm with you. There's high expectations right now, man. We supposed to go out there and get these wins this year. And why is it damn near impossible to get a gift of Jay Gruden smiling? Or at least having a straight face. Why are they got all these gifts of him with, with these goofy little faces? They hating on my boy. Y'all gonna quit playing with my boy. That's my coach. Now, six. Kirk Cousins has said he loves his new offense, especially Terrell Pryor. And I strongly appreciate this dude, too. Kirk Cousins has said, quote, I like it because I've never had a conversation with a receiver like I've had with him, where he said, yeah, it was a two invert. So I took it to the post and it was quarters on the backside. He really can see it and he's going to hold me accountable. So you can take the good with the bad. I love it. He's an enthusiastic guy. He's always wanting to run another route. Let's try it again. Let's do it again. Just a positive attitude. And he's been a joy to work with this far. You know, this is, end quote, this is going to be a crazy duo. People people not really talking about it. And some people on NFL Network, some geniuses up there been saying, hey, y'all don't sleep on Terrell Pryor. You know, he had over a thousand yards receiving and he had multiple quarterbacks and in gel and mojo and consistency and timing and you know a connection with your quarterback means a lot so the fact that he had over a thousand yards receiving without any of that is just crazy so people I mean he's fast big Kirk Cousins is literally never thrown to anybody of this height in any point of his football career since high school so that's very interesting so now he has a bigger target window to throw to than he's ever had so I'm expecting Kirk Cousins to look better but I mean later in this season people gonna come back to this video and see I was right and then they gonna like comment favorite subscribe and share this video you know <laughs> and seven my Boy, Josh, we ain't out here to be nice, Norman. Josh Norman voted 59th best player in the NFL. That's also a super underrated, you know, but I ain't going to get into that. People just love to hate on us. He's out here saying Des Bryant is overrated, quote, just a guy, unquote. And Odell is just a kid, a wannabe tough guy. And hold up, them Odell points are actually straight facts on the slick. <laughs> But I love this trash talk. We need more people like him. Not just on the Redskins, but in the NFL, period. It's entertaining. Richard Sherman had a few moments, but he's calmed down lately. You know, we need more bad blood in the NFL. It makes the whole sport and everything around it just more entertaining and fun to watch. It gets you and your team pumped up and ready to back up the talk. And it, it's just... It just shows to prove like how even when the NFC East isn't the best division in football, it's always arguably the most entertaining. I love it. Keep the hate coming. Josh Norman, the trash talking crown belongs to you right now. And I want more to follow suit. These celebrations are going to add to the trash talking and the ignorance too. So, I mean, hopefully this let up on the celebration rules will lead to a let up on media rules and policies that allow folks to, you know, get on the mics and start joining on folks. 
and just talking trash. I want to see all of it. I want the NFL to become more fun every in every facet of the whole thing. Media, celebrations, on the field. Lax up on some of these rules, y'all. Y'all being cornballs. I mean, and just take my advice. I don't want to hear anything about the NFL trying to be family friendly and kid friendly. Y'all show beer commercials during every commercial break. So stop it. Stop that noise. That excuse is dead. Let us have our fun. Eighth and the final point. One of the future integral pieces to the dominant dynasty of a defense that has finally been signed. The last pick of this year's draft to be signed. My boy Fabian Moreau finally got that pen on that paper. And he just got that check, and he's about to be on his I'm going to show y'all why I deserve to be a first-round pick tour. It's begun now, y'all. Y'all, Man, I'm telling y'all, y'all see that at the top right, sir, lock up. Y'all see these highlights. Take note. Boy, he going to be locking some folks up. I'm going to need him to go out there and show them other 31 teams what they miss. Show them why the 80 people drafted before you were the worst mistakes any GM and team has ever made. I mean, minus Jonathan Allen and Ryan Anderson, of course. But make me proud out there, boy. Do it for Lil Saint, you know? Do it. Go out there and do it for my boy Lil Saint. And that is it for the street report. Um, I was trying to be brief, trying not to lag along like I normally do, but y'all already know how it go. Like, comment, debate, say something in the comments. Give me something to talk about. Let me, you know, let me converse with y'all. Let me debate. You can even join if you want to. Look at this picture. You can talk about them braids, something. But, um, you know, share, subscribe, favorite, all of that. Y'all already know. Thank you for watching. I'm grateful. Y'all the best. I'll be back with another report coming soon. Oh, and um, I'm going to be releasing a depth chart guess soon. Hopefully by tomorrow. I'm just going to basically guess the Redskins depth chart. And when... Preseason ends and the final depth chart is released. I'm gonna compare it to mine and see where I went wrong or where the Redskins went wrong because you know I'm a genius. And so, looking forward to putting that out there. And so, again, thank y'all very much. See y'all next time. Avery, take me. My name even amazing. Jamila wasn't stupid when she drew it up and named me. Avery, Avery, step up the pace, please. You'll be number one if you wasn't so lazy. Answer this, why folks so shady? If I wasn't nonchalant, I'd probably go crazy. But I wear this chain that my grandma gave me. As long as I do rhymes, I'll be up in due time. I've always had a glow and I know I'ma do fine. This is do or die, come up, it's gonna get do I Always had something to show and I know I'ma do mine. As long as I do rhymes, I'll be up in due time. I've always had a glow and I know I'ma do fine. This is do or die. Then the show and I know what we do nice. As long as I can do I can right, just be up to do time I'm always out of glow and I know I'm a do fine This is the or I can mess with cocky do I always have something to show and I know I'm a do fine